Imagine you're sitting at home watching YouTube. Actually, you don't have to imagine that second part, you're doing that right now. An ad appears before the video you want to watch. Given the fact that YouTube doesn't allow ad blockers now, and the ad says, Eat healthy. Good nutrition leads to a good life. Come by your local all-you-can-eat donut buffet today. Huh? How did that make any sense? Well, it didn't. And that is actually sometimes the state of recent movies and shows. In the last 20 years or so, there have been a number of media popping up that, in my opinion, offer mixed messaging with how they approach different themes. There's actually been a lot of these over the years, and I want to list a few examples to showcase exactly what I mean. One example that comes straight to mind is Ready Player One. I've actually shown footage from this movie in a few of my videos, but never actually talked about it outright. For those unfamiliar, this movie came out in 2018 and was adapted from the 2011 novel by Ernest Cline. The movie and book focus on a young man's hunt through a virtual reality scavenger hunt system made by an old inventor named Halliday to find various items, but also uncover a greater conspiracy of the government utilizing this VR technology called the Oasis for greedy, malicious purposes. In a nutshell, this seems to be saying technology in the hands of the government is bad, but the issue here is the way the technology is presented in the movie, it ultimately is glorified and made it seem like a good thing? Which doesn't really make any sense when you consider all the lives being lost and innocent people being killed over this technology, including the main character's own family. If anything, the message should really be, this type of technology is clearly too much for people to handle and resist and should be destroyed. But it isn't, and there's a very muddled meaning as a result. This is exactly what I mean when I refer to mixed message media. There isn't really any consistency with the theming. Perhaps another notable example in the last 20 years or so would actually be the Jurassic World movies. The very first Jurassic Park movie from 1993, wow, 30 years ago I'm old. The plot, as many of you likely know, is that a vast nature park has been crafted by resurrecting dinosaurs from fossilized DNA. However, it all goes wrong, and a lot of people within the park are killed or have to run for their lives, thanks to the scientists that resurrected these dinosaurs choosing to play the god and bring a creature back in a way it should not have been, and at a time it should not have been. This was largely a core theme of the movie, showing the consequences of people's actions when they try to play God. However, the Jurassic World movies, being much more recent, miss this philosophy entirely, and choose to revel in the spectacle of the dinosaurs coexisting with the humans, and much like Ready Player One's mistake, glorify it, which, in turn, defeats the point of the original film. For a different angle on this sort of missing the mark ideology in filmmaking, one need not look any further than the Hobbit trilogy. For those who don't know, the original Hobbit books actually focused on the themes of fighting against greed and how greed can bring out the worst in humanity. However, the reason why the Hobbit movies exist at all actually stands in stark contrast to what the book was trying to say. The Hobbit movies were actually crafted on the backs of changing the labor laws in New Zealand so that Warner Brothers wouldn't have to pay the New Zealand workers fairly we're not obligated to share any profits with said workers. This is a whole rabbit hole, so I'll be linking an article below that explains the specific details of this situation better. But long story short, what was happening behind the scenes at Warner Brothers directly contradicted the message of the book and movies. This is actually very likely the most common type of mixed message media that exists, sadly. Rather than the plot itself directly contradicting the message it's trying to portray, this is more the studio behind it that is doing that. This is actually a very common thing in Hollywood, nobody's surprised. Free Willy was a movie about how keeping whales in captivity and treating them poorly was a bad thing, but it kept whales in captivity and treated them poorly to try and spread that message. Although you could say the message in The Hobbit still does contradict the plot. In The Hobbit novel, Bilbo Baggins learns the virtue of mercy and wins everyone's respect with his quick thinking rather than using violence to get out of tight situations. In the movies, inevitably, the violence is glorified and mindless action scenes are completely strewn about. You could argue this is just modern Hollywood, which you'd be right, but that misses the point still. For my last example, I want to bring up a more recent example in Raya and the Last Dragon, Disney's big animated movie from early 2021. In this movie, the main character Raya is on a quest to save her world with the help of a shape-shifting dragon, and the overlying theme is putting your trust in others. However, this theme completely backfires when you look at her relationship with the main antagonist. The main villain continues to portray Raya in the worst, most personal ways possible, and also deflecting those choices on Araya. 
but Raya continues to give the villain multiple chances. If anything, the overarching thing should have been learning to be more trustworthy, not learning to trust others, and also that you must pay the price for your bad choices and not blame others. This movie still confounds me and infuriates me to this day with how awful the message is here at the end of the day. So, mixed message media is clearly a very real thing in the modern day, and there are definitely different variations on it. A lot of this just comes down to bad writing, but with how movies are often the main cornerstone of art and entertainment these days, things could obviously be a lot better. This is why I would say if you're a writer like myself, always get someone to read your story before going further with a final draft. Having a second set of eyes from an outside perspective could honestly be really beneficial and lead to less messes like the ones I talked about. Thankfully, there are plenty of media that don't do this and are actually pretty well written, even in the modern era. Let's hope we continue to see more of that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a like anyway. Thank you for everyone that has supported me and we are now actually a YouTube partner. We are getting monetized for these videos. We still need to get to 1k to receive ad revenue and other benefits that come with YouTube Partner, but the fact we're here is mind-blowing to me. I never in a million years would see myself doing this, so thank you to everyone that's come by my Twitch streams, everyone that's watched these videos, everyone that's watched my TikTok, my Instagram, just kept up with me and supported me in general. It means more than you know, so thank you to everyone that's been there for me. I really look forward to doing more on here and continuing to make Philosophical media analysis videos for all y'all. Um, all my socials are in the links below if you're curious. Like this video, share, subscribe. Really helps as we continue to the push for full benefits of YouTube Partner. But uh, thank you all for just being there for me in general. It means a lot. But for now, I've been Noah the Honor, and I'll see you in the Honor side. Bye!